what we've got here is a very generous gift from a viewer. I'm not going to mention his name because I haven't asked him if I can or not. But he's kindly sent four Hemingway kits. Finger plate, compact rotary brooch, sensitive knurling tool and a tailstock die holder. Also he has included two sets of these. They're gauge pins. Five mil. Up you know, from one mil to ten mil. Two sets of those which will be very handy which there's been times I could have used them before too. A Sutton tap, 10 by 1.25, and here's a plain arbor for the um, for the rotary brooch. I believe that's for mate. I cannot thank you enough. This is going to keep me keep me occupied um, over the next few months. Just I can just tick along and yeah have a crack at these. The first one I reckon I'm going to have a crack at is finger plate because um, I had to drill a little hole the other day in a piece of bar stock, and yeah, none of my V blocks were were small enough, so. I could have used that the other day so i'm going to have a crack at making that i reckon yeah but these kits they include everything bearings knobs set screws a whole lot uh, looking forward to these so thank you very much mate you know who you are and um truly appreciate your generosity with these hemingway kits i don't believe they like the plants being shown too much on camera so i've had to sort of cover everything up best i can so what i've done is the main block I've already had in the mill and I've got it to the size it has to be. So it's two and a half inches square. It calls for a slot around three sides so you can use toe clamps. I'm not going to worry about that feature. I don't believe I need it. These slots here that you use for when you're drilling down, like using it for drilling down through a hole or whatever, I'm going to continue them right through. There's a two threaded, three threaded holes has to be put in it and this V groove so you can see what it ends up looking like okay I just edge found and picked up on that very corner that's where everything is going to be referenced off okay this first hole is going to be 3 8 of an inch deep and going to be tapped quarter national fine This next hole calls for a quarter 40. I don't have quarter 40 taps, dies. I've got quarter 32 though, so that's going to be close enough. It's going to take me time and tap these holes off camera. Using a bit of Hangster for super all tap. I like this stuff. Okay, so along this face here, there has to be a V groove. All the sizes it's calling for, I don't have, so I'm just going to make this up. I'm going to use a countersink to put the V in, but before I do that, I'm going to put a 5mm slot to a depth I don't know yet. Until I think it's right, then I'll run through with the, the V, and then 3 quarters of an inch in from this face, it has to be a through hole. Okay, I've got a 5mm cutter. I'm going to attempt to go about 5mm deep to start with. Not in one go though. I haven't got balls that big. Ah oh dear. I was just building a cup of tea and I had that gut feeling something wasn't right that I'd screwed up. And sure as shit I have. This hole here should have been turned over and the V groove put on the opposite side so that hole shouldn't be there it should be on the opposite side looking at the plans it's for some clamp screw to, I'd say so I don't know what it's for and whether I really even need it I'm going to work that out later but yeah not real happy about it something wasn't right and yeah sure as hell something wasn't right so now I'm going to put this V groove in don't know how it's going to turn out with that cutter it might be pretty, it might not, but anyway, we'll see what happens.
Didn't turn out actually too bad considering the amount of wobble in that tool. <laughs> I reckon I might just go another try a tiny bit deeper and put on a real slow feed so it gets the best finish possible. Call it quits at that. But I'll do that last bit off camera. Okay, that slot's done. Reasonably happy with it, with the tools I've had, or well, tools I've got to do it. Can't really expect much better. Um, now I've got to put a 316 through hole, and then I have to put it on its edge and put a hole in from the side here that kind of, yeah, meets up with this one. So I'll do that in a second as well. Okay, so now I'm going to take this out of here, stand it on its end, and I've got to put a hole that's in line with this one here. That's three quarters of an inch in from this end. So I don't want to lose where this is positioned in the vise because the DRA is already set. Now I had a viewer send some gifts in, and he's made a pair of these for me, these vise stops. He's done an absolutely brilliant job. And I had one that I made a long, long time ago. I think there's a video on it. And these, yeah, these are way, way better than mine. He even included spring-loaded ball bearing set screws. So you can sit it on and you can um, nip it up just a little bit. And it, it just stays there. Get it into place and just nip it up lightly and it's... It's absolutely spot on. Absolutely beautiful job. All the chamfers meet in the corners beautifully. They're all exactly the same. They're as neat as a pin. Beautiful surface finish. Done an exceptional job. Pretty nice work, mate. You know who you are. You've done a top job. So now I'll flip it up on its end. I can put that through. Oh, that, it's got to be a threaded hole coming from this side. That holds another clamp on. Okay, got the part flipped up. I've used an edge finder and found center, and then I'm going to drill and tap for M4. So I'm just going to tap it off camera. Okay, I've changed over to a quarter inch end mill. So on three sides, it's got to have a, a slot putting in the Y direction. Now, the plan calls for a quarter inch slot along here. So, sort of like that. And then this slot come down and meet in with it. I know you guys come in a bit late then because I didn't turn the camera on. I am really tempted to put that slot through actually just for appearance reasons more than anything. That actually went pretty darn well. 125th hour depth of cut and feeding at just over an inch a minute. They all lined up pretty darn good. Pretty happy with that. Just a bit pissed about this hole being on the wrong side, but I'm pretty happy I did put that groove in because just, just for the looks, it looks pretty good. Anyway, I'm going to pack up because I've had a gut for today. Go and in and have a cup of coffee. There's one rule I have in this workshop at the end of every day that I'm in here. 
everything gets cleaned down and all tools are put away. I cannot stand coming in and having a mess. It just gives me the shits. So I pack all the tools away. I clean the mills down. If I'm using a lay, the lay gets a full clean. And if you do it every day, it only takes 10 minutes. You know, 15 minutes tops. Vacuum out, back in the floor. You know, and I do it during the day, back in the floor during the day, so it doesn't become a massive job in the afternoon, but that's the way I like to leave my machines, just like that. Cleaned, oiled, no swarf, no nothing, just all vacuumed up, clean up, and yeah, all nice and neat for the next day. Okay, I'm going to have a go at making this piece next. Now, mistake number two. When I was making this I couldn't work out and I thought it was just guesswork wherever you decide to put it was this groove or this V and this through hole well it turns out you can work out exactly where it's got to be off this part here this bottom side's all right but when I go to put the top hole in I have to mount it up and spot it through from this side to get the exact alignment I just completely missed it um, anyway shit happens I'm gonna build that next I've machined this part to length what has to happen is eighth inch up from the bottom of the block has to be come along then come up come along come up has to be a hole eventually put in there as well and then another hole on this end but I won't be able to put this hole in until I actually get it onto the block then I can transfer it through because I screwed up that dimension but it's not going to hurt it's it'll still it's not far off from what i can work out bottom ledge here is only going to be an eighth inch wide so i've just got enough clearance on the vise to machine that off back in three quarters of an inch that cutter seems pretty dull to me i don't like it Done. This part can come out now and then test fit it on the block. Okay, so that's what I ended up with. It actually fitted perfectly. A good surface finish. There's no there's no lip here. There's no gap under that where it joins up onto the plate. So now I hit the numbers on that one. Pretty happy about that. All I done was continued or picked up off this hole use that as a drill guide to come through this side so pretty happy with that so that part's finished now i can move on to the actual clamping pieces right here we're going to move on to making this finger plate what i've done i've drilled a hole roughly in the middle of this slot because i don't have any, any center cutting end mills so this is not in center of the part either so i've got the part to length these are going to be quarter 32 holes with this quarter inch slot 38 long 38 between center to center of the, the radius is on the end anyway so gonna do that drill these two holes yeah i've got to do the tapers says as you can see down here there's two tapers on this as well i think that's 15 and that's seven degrees i think and then anyway get these slots and holes in
That coolant I know is getting really bad, but I'm gonna have to wait for the next YouTube payment to buy some more. Okay, off camera I'll tap them and then they're done. Okay, on the end of this finger, there has to be a quarter inch slot, five sixteenth in from this end, just so you got somewhere like it's a fork you can drill down through. So I'm not going to use a coolant because it's absolutely knackered. So I'm just going to do it dry. Deburred with a needle file, and then I've got to set up all, all the different angles to put the tapers, all that stuff on it. So, okay, I've done a bit of marking out. So, this has a um, tapers on it that's I think it's 15 degrees, and this one has a 7 degree taper on it. Plus, they have tapers going down that way as well on both of them. Definitely think I've stuffed that angle up there somehow. Yeah, I had the seven degrees in there, not 15 degree. So, yeah, my mistake. I'll take it out there, bird, flip it over and do it again. Okay, I've turned the part around, put the seven degree gauge blocks in there, angle blocks. So I've got a mark here, three quarters of an inch back from the end there. And the um, cutter lines up with that mark, which should be right. Put the little taper on the front here at 25 degrees. See bird that, and that's good enough. So that's the end result. And the plans it shows for these be rounded off, but I don't want to do that. I'm just going to leave it as is. Don't look too bad. Okay, so we're going to make this part next. I have got it to dimension out on the outside. The hole in the centre. And then this, these two grooves or scallops here are offset from this edge. Or both edges. Then there is a thin trench put along here and this center section is like got a convex you gotta file that in so it's gonna be interesting Alrighty, I've worked the offset out um, ready to change that battery in the camera first just a straight plunge down same on both sides swap over to a very small end mill and put two troughs in first of all I've already reduced this thickness of this from quarter inch down to 732 so 
Okay, <clears throat> I've varied off the plans a bit. This called for a very fine slot to be put down each side of here and then a convex filed into it. I had, did have, a real small end mill. I don't know, I think it's about 3 mil. It lasted about 3 seconds and yeah, it was no good. So what I'm going to do, I think, is see how it goes as it is. If I think I need that convex in it, then I'll just file it in the whole the whole piece in that whole flat land there. But for now, I'll just see how it goes. Yeah, me and small end mills do not mix, especially on the Cincinnati. Okay, that's got to be threaded now. So I'm just running a die up this one. Going to set this up and cut a nail on it. Okay, it's pretty gummy this material. Parting this off. There's a three mil hole on the end of that, but there's a little copper oh, dome. I'll show you anyway. It's got to be Loctited in there. This that little, there's a little, this comes in the kit, and this goes in the end of the hole there, the three mil hole, just like that. She's in. Okay, we've got to make enough for the end of that thread. Um, it's got a knurl on it, a quarter 28 thread up the guts. And this has got to be down to 9 sixteenths. This material is pretty darn gummy, eh? And you know, it would reduce this down to 9 sixteenths or just above it. There's no, it's not a crucial measurement. And jam a thread on it or up it in a knurl. Okay, the way I've always used my knurling tool is I put it over the job, I tighten it down a little bit, and then I just simply wind it back, and it winds up over, spreads itself over, and digs itself into the part. Instead of trying to hold it over the centre of the part and then crank down on it, I just find it's easier, you can just roll it forward, give it a little adjustment, bring it back. That's the way I've always done it anyway. It seems to have worked every other time I've done it. And we'll make something work out of that, I think. Better drill and tap that before I go too stupid, eh?
so that's what we ended up with it'll do well for now this is done it clamps down well clamps down really well Now they do say in the plans and they give you a bit of silver steel to, well this bit here, to make drill bushings. I'm not going to go to that extent just yet because I don't know if I'll even use this side of it. Who knows what I'm going to need. So but when the time comes that I need a bushing then I'll just put this piece of material and this bit of tool steel on the, um, it's not tool steel, whatever it is, bloody silver steel in the uh in the drawer I mean the day I need it I can make me make the bushings up now I am pretty disappointed I put that thread in the wrong side that's pissed me off a bit that one in there that should have been on the bottom side but it turns out I'm not going to use that feature anyway this is just going to be put in the vise um, and the reason why I did put that slot around there is just for appearance just to make it look good but for holding little parts, it's going to be perfect. Would have been all right to have this when I was building the, um, the web engines. But it looks all right. You know, that's just to finish straight off the machines. I haven't done anything with them. This bracket is sort of a pain in the bum in a lot of ways. So you may be able to just come off and stay off for now. Much better without it. You can clamp it wherever you want. It's a good thing. But overall, pretty happy with that. Uh, I realise I haven't stuck to the plans 100% on every last little bit. And I did screw that threaded hole up. That's, that's my mistake. Um, but I wish I had had this a long time ago when I was building them web engines. That would have been great. All the little bits in there. But anyway... I got one now, and thanks very much to the viewer that sent all these kits in. Yeah, very, very much appreciated. And in all honesty, they're a fun little build. They're, they're, they are a fun build to do. The plans are good. All the instructions are good. So anyone can have a crack at making this. It's not very hard. Anyway, thanks for watching. Hope you've enjoyed that. I've got some more appointments I've got to go to today, so this was, yeah, it's only half past seven in the morning, so I had to come out and make this nut quickly, and then um, then I can get the video edited, yeah, get it edited for tonight. <laughs> Righto, guys, thanks for watching, I'll see you later.